Hey everyone, this is G here, uh, recovering from a little bit of a cold, so forgive me for being a little bit froggy, but I um, wanted to make a video today talking about a cycling route in the professional world that I'm really excited for this coming weekend, which is the stage in the Giro d'Italia to Lockhaus. Um, it's a mountain in the Apennine regions, um, pretty far south down in uh, Italy. I should say it's in the Apennine mountain range in the Abruzzo region. And interestingly enough, it has a German name. Uh, there was a military base on top of this mountain um, that's at about 7,000 feet or 2,100 meters elevation. And uh, it was uh, fortituted by a Austrian commander at one point, and they just titled stone buildings in the German language Blockhaus um, at that time period. So the name stuck. And it, interestingly enough, uh, if you spend time in the north of Italy, you actually see a lot of uh, signs in German, like a Italian German cosign, especially close to the Austrian border, like in the Dolomites. This is quite a bit south from there, but uh, the German language is used in Italy a little more or maybe a lot more than a lot of us uh, realize for a variety of historical reasons. Uh, and this is a historical mountain um, in broad history, but in cycling history, this mountain is a legend. In 1967, I believe, Eddie Merckx won on top of this mountain, and um, previously he was thought of as more of a classics guy or a sprinter, so that the newspapers were like, a sprinter beat the climbers on the blockhouse. Um, and the reputation of this mountain, at least by stats, is a lot of people say that it's the hardest climb in Europe, which is interesting because you think of the hardest climb in Europe would be in the highest mountain range, perhaps like the Alps, or at least the Pyrenees, which is a bigger mountain range than the um, Apennines in terms of the, the total height. The Apennines is a gigantic mountain range. It basically goes all the way down. Italy from um, north, sort of not quite upper north, but north to south. And uh, in the area where the blockhouse is, that's where the highest Apennine mountains are, which top out at about mm, 9,500 feet, a little under 10,000 feet. And there's two national parks, uh, I believe, uh, Parco Nacionale Abruzzo and Parco Nacionale Gran Sasso. They really remind me of like Kings Canyon and Sequoia because they're kind of on top of each other and basically border each other. It's like one big national park, but that's where they film a lot of TV commercials. They call it Little Tibet up by the, the Gran Sasso d'Italia. That's a, a big, beautiful uh, limestone mountain. Um, but anyway, by numbers, the blockhouse is... Um, I believe a 6,400 feet gain in 17, maybe 17 and a quarter miles. So that's like a seven, almost seven and a half percent average grade for nearly 18 miles, um, which you know that some of those miles are gonna be a little easier, which means some of them are harder. So like imagine being eight miles into a climb. An eight mile climb is a big one already. And then suddenly you're at a 10% grade and the air is starting to get thin. So it's it's not the steepest like the Mortarolo or the Angleru in Spain, but it is just a tremendous amount of altitude gain. You can basically start in sea level. If you, if you ride away from the official base, you can go to a, an ocean town and then get to the base pretty quickly and end up at 7,000 feet. This year's race is going to finish at just below six, so they're not going to the top. It's, it's not that well of a maintained road, although there is no cars past a certain altitude. So if you do want to tackle it yourself, um, then just know that the last bit is reserved for walking and cycling, so that could be pretty cool. But you can go from, from sea level to 7,000 feet in under 20 miles. That That's phenomenal. That's a tremendous amount of altitude gain. And uh, the riders are going to feel it in their legs big time. It's a stage that's almost 200k, I think about 185 or something like that. And they, they climb two thirds of the climb just before. There, there's a pass, I think it's called the Paso Lanciano. Um, that goes most of the way up. 
And so you can go up and over that pass. And I think there's four routes to the top of that pass. And then to the top of Blockhouse, there's one road from there. So there's, there's four total ways to get to the top. Well, there's one way to get to the top, but there's four possible routes where you do the bulk of the climbing on a bunch of these different roads. So they're gonna do a bunch of mountains, as you see in the, the profile. It's a lumpy course, and then they have the Lanciano the first time, and then they go up even higher to the finish. It's gonna be a brutal day. I expect someone like um, Bardet or um, the Ecuadorian Carapaz will have a good day there. Uh, it's definitely a, a climber's ride for sure. If it's super, super windy, I know the upper portion is more exposed and grassy. That could play a factor, but I, I have a feeling it's going to just be a slugfest amongst the climbers. Riders are going to be exhausted. It's been a hard Giro already, and it's going to shake out the GC in a big way. Will it be more epic than what happens in the Dolomites in the third week? Maybe yes, maybe no. Time will tell, but it definitely is going to be a stage for the record books. And even if you're not interested in following the Giro d'Italia, I wanted to make this video for partially because I just want to encourage you to check it out. If you love the idea of doing a climb that gains 6,000 feet, which I'm sure all of you do, who wouldn't love that idea, um, then the Blockhouse is the place to be. The thing about going to a place that, that's less trendy than, say, going to the heart of the Alps, where there's awesome climbs like the Galibier and Alpe d'Huez are going and doing the Stelvio, probably the most epic and famous climb in, in Italy. Those are worth doing, but the thing about doing the famous climbs is they're busy, there's more people, it's, it's more of a thing, it's more of a show, it might be in more of an expensive area. A place like... Um, like, you know, the Spanish Pyrenees or, or you know, deep in uh, Abruzzo and the Apennine Mountains, these places are going to be chill. These places are going to be old world and old fashioned and kind of a little bit more untouched Italy. And, and the cycling culture there is, is deep and beloved. So I um, wanted to encourage you to check it out. I myself have not been. Um, I've cycled the climbs in the Dolomites and I'll try and make a video later this week about my predictions for some of those courses, but um, I really, really want to go. It's definitely high on my list. In, in the area, you can do rides on the ocean, you can do uh, wine country rides in Chieti, uh, and then you can do all kinds of climbing um, in mountain roads near the blockhouse, and then the, the trip to the top. is It's a pilgrimage, you know. You, you, you spend a lot of time riding uphill with no downhill to make the summit. And um, it's it can be very hot there as well from, from the late spring onward. Um, so yeah, wanted to encourage you to check it out if you're interested. Riding in Italy is awesome. Riding in, in all of Mediterranean Europe is really, really amazing and very welcoming. I've had some of the best days of my life doing so. Um, and it, the scenery is beautiful. It's not that the United States doesn't have equally beautiful scenery. It's just there's more water fountains. There's more restaurants on top of these tiny mountain roads. There's more places to get some food, get a coffee. You get a few more fist bumps from the, the drivers. You get honked at sometimes too. It's just a, a little more encouragement from the U.S., a little less honking. Um, yeah, and it's just the, the culture is just very steep there. You can, you can feel it, and it's inspiring. So um, hopefully this video has inspired you to check it out. Tune into the Giro d'Italia. Uh, if you like cycling in California, most of this channel is cycling vlogs. You can check that out in the links below. Uh, see the local area that I cycle in or the places that I travel to. And if you ever want to do some yoga, learn about um, yoga for cyclists, come on tour with me. I'm offering events on a semi-regular basis as well. So check out my website, gabrielbenjaminyoga.com to look into meeting in person and riding together, doing a, a few healthy stretches, keep our back and our knees from uh, getting too creaky as we, <laughs> as we continue on in this, uh, in this thing called life. All right, thank you so much for checking in, everyone. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, a subscription, and uh, a comment. And I look forward to producing more content for you soon. Thank you so much. Ciao.